On this hunt, I'm chasing high climbing mountain goats on Alaska's Kenai Peninsula. Here, you're at the mercy of unforgiving mountains that provide serious avalanche threats, insurmountable gullies, and brush that acts like jail cell bars made out of barbed wire. It's gonna be a dangerous climb, but the reward of goat meat and a snow white hide makes it worth the risk. Two goats up here. There they are. We got a shot. I'm Steven Ronella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. It's about sustenance, survival. It's about connecting to the land. It's about the purity of the challenge. It's about life. In each and every one of us, there is a primal instinct to hunt and consume. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. Peninsula of South Central Alaska is about the size of New Jersey and Connecticut put together. It's home to a sparsely distributed population of mountain goats. They're big, they have snow white hides, they're tasty, and they are a nightmare to get to. There's only two ways that a non-resident can hunt a mountain goat in Alaska. With a licensed outfitter or with a first of kin relative who's a legal resident of the state. For that reason, my brother Danny comes in awful handy. We've been hunting together since we were big enough to pump air guns, and he's sponsored me on a number of hunts that would otherwise be way beyond my budget. I can't even begin to tell you how many hunts have been planned around Danny's kitchen table, and this one is no different. So you'd always be looking at thick timber, probably. You're not gonna be able to see much of that from the shore of the lake. That's what I would worry about. You'd just be looking at tall timber. Yep. Yep, and coming this way, you got a, a mile and a half of probably bushwhacking. That, I was wondering if that's just like an alder choked hell hole oh, right there. Yeah, I guarantee. I mean, I, I don't I don't know of a trail going up there. You know, we, we could look. But look at how packed those lines no, are, no, no. man. You know, you could get along on the trail or the lake shore, and, and even if you could see up in there, then you got a, just a mile of nasty. But I mean, if you saw a bunch of goats here and it made it worth your while, it just, you could certainly do that, you know. But you might not be able to glass them from down here is what no, you're saying. You, you, you know, you come around here, just set up your spot and scope and just... You know what, that would be a good idea, man. I understand that when you get there, things change, but I think the best thing is that we go down, set up a base camp, and if we can, get up onto some of these other peaks over here and look at some of that stuff. Like, go into it with that being the plan. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Perfect. Any high country hunt in bad weather involves standing around the truck trying to figure out what pieces of gear you want to bring and what you want to leave behind. I, I got a bow saw. It's in that cap. I can want to get it. It's a, it's a stem saw. It folds into the handle. You know these things? He's want to get that thing, man. If you bring it, you got to carry it. But if you don't bring it, you might regret not having it. Once we get our gear put together, we got to get out of here. Danny already blew through all his vacation time fishing halibut and hunting moose. We've only got two full days. And if you think a two-day goat hunt sounds insane, you don't even know the half of it. In order to get up the mountain, Danny and I will have to navigate a damn steep mountain covered in damn thick brush. So we take a moment to plan our route based on what we're seeing from the mountain's base. And that's where we get a bit lucky. Oh, there's a goat. Oh, are, you, are you serious? Yeah, right there. Oh, plain as day. It's right on a rock. Maybe we should put the scope on it. Sure, yeah, why not? Entire book chapters have been written about how to tell a male mountain goat from a female mountain goat. Even some biologists have a hard time with it. On a billy, the horn, base of the horn, is gonna appear at a distance to be bigger than the eyeball. A nanny has a thin horn, and her horn base will appear to be about the size of an eyeball. Also, on a big billy, you wouldn't be able to lay a finger between those horns. There's not much white between those horns. On a nanny, you're gonna have a fair bit of real estate between the horns. Looking directly at you, a nanny's horns will appear almost to do a Y. They'll appear like this, slightly. A Billy's horns will appear more like this. But of course, like, there's no hard and fast rules to any of this stuff. So you're looking at this whole collection of ideas to try to find a mature animal. 
not easy to do. You gotta give them a couple good looks. Here on the Kenai, you're allowed to kill male or female, but they highly encourage you to kill a billy. In fact, if you kill a nanny, you're not eligible for this hunt again for several years. So I'm under a lot of motivation to find a billy. I've been on three mountain goat hunts in my life, and I still cannot really tell a billy from a nanny at a long distance away. So to make up for my lack of experience, my plan is to get as close as I can and make my decision based on careful observation. As Danny and I begin to head up the mountain, we encounter the first real test of this hunt. You say two goat hunters died this year so far. One for sure, maybe two, I don't know. I was thinking that this ride up the mountain would be pretty gravy, but in fact, it's turning out to be nothing but Devil's Club and Alder. This is like trying to climb through the bars of a jail that have to be coated in barbed wire. I know the Kenai Peninsula mainly from a few times when I've fished it. Doing that, you're down on the river staring up at these big nasty mountains and something about you wants to climb up in there. But then the minute you do climb up in there, you start to regret your decision. I would never invest time trying to clear your little brush out for a trail, but if we get a goat, we're most certainly gonna be shoveling a couple runs through here, so. It's worth a little bit of an investment. These mountains are rugged, they're steep, they're wet, they're full of brush, pure misery. Ah. Devil's Club and Alder make for a one-two punch because the Alder is pretty much like a fence. It's hard to get through. The Devil's Club's not so hard to get through, but as you get through it, it coats you in thorns. So pretty soon you look at your hands and it's hundreds of little thorns and pustules formed from little minor infections. It is hell. At a point, man, you almost got to try to think of it as something that's funny. Ridiculous. What do you think, up to the cliff or right here? What's a couple hundred more Devil's Club thorns? The thing about hunting mountains is you're always lured into this kind of stuff because there's the promise of alpine. You know that if you can get through the brush, you're gonna bust out in the high country above tree line where all the brush is ankle high. So it lures you in because it's like this pot of gold at the end of a very nasty rainbow. Here's a good sign right here because it's our first little tuft of mountain go here. You see those goats must come along these cliff faces. Maybe he's down here in the winter, I don't know. He could be down here now. Right there though. I don't want to be jumpy, but I think we're like kind of almost officially out of the real nasty. Finally, after hours of climbing, we bust up into the Alpine. Earlier, I was saying that alders are like jail cell bars. Well, getting out of the alders is like getting out of jail. It is liberating. Now that we finally have a chance to actually do some hunting, our first order of business is to find that goat that we saw from the base of the mountain. I think that's definitely the one we were looking at. Same kind of setup. Unfortunately, getting a closer look at it just leads to disappointment. Look at Nanny. Yeah, it's definitely Nanny. Even when I know for absolute certain that I'm looking at a Nanny, I catch myself staring at it in hopes that it'll magically morph into a Billy. <laughs> yeah, she definitely knows we're here. She's scooting out. She's probably just gonna climb for a while. It would be an easy shot and a reasonable pack out from here. Ready? But I made a pack of myself to only shoot a Billy. And despite the time constraint, I'm gonna try and honor that commitment. So we set out to cover more ground. What we didn't expect was this much snow. See that name? He came right through here. 
You see how far, how high she got? So in maybe like 45 minutes or an hour, the goat went from way below us to the highest peak up there. Just right through, man. Mountain goats have the unique ability to easily get to places where their predators can't. That makes them a difficult animal to hunt. You cannot kill what you cannot reach. After hours of trudging through the snow and not seeing any more goats, Danny and I decided to call it a day. I spent a lot of time trying to like convince myself that like every goat I see, my initial impulse is, oh, there's a Billy. It's just like some kind of weird optimism, you know what I mean? I, I don't know, man, something in me wants it so bad to be a Billy. I think tomorrow the only thing that makes sense is the goat toward the head of this draw Check that out. If that doesn't look good, to stay on this same ridge that runs to the north. I don't see any reason we wouldn't get on more goats tomorrow. It's just a matter of finding them. In the morning, we decided to head deeper into new country, hopefully avoiding the thigh-deep snow. I think the thing deep means go toward that saddle and then go glass all those snow-free cliffs, that snow line over there. I think we're a little bit above them. Yeah, I think we're above them. I think there's too much snow up here. Finally, after wading through snow for four miles, we get our eyes on a couple billies. I see one goat all the ways away. There's four. The upper one's definitely a billy goat. That upper one's a billy. The lower one looks billyish. He definitely knows we're here. I wonder if he'd hold tight long enough for get us to get to that next ridge and see what's down below us. We got two deep gullies between here and there, not including this one right here. I think we should push ahead a little bit to see what's up there. Big Billy's on to us. He definitely knows we're here. So as we leave view, I mean, this could all be just in my imagination, but as we leave view, I want to go down, look like I'm going downhill, because that makes them a lot less nervous. They hate stuff higher than them. Like that nanny that you did earlier that went, I mean, we were higher than that nanny. Freaked her out. It's a risky approach because there's gonna be ample opportunity for the goats to spot us, but our only real option is to drop down an elevation till we get below the snow line and then move along this face toward the goats. Oh, I see four right now. There's another one. Skyline on the next ridge. I get the scope out. See who I'm talking about? Yeah. Skyline. Plain as day. He's looking nervous. I bet we blew that. That's probably him. He just put some distance between us. Yeah, that low one's about to go out of view. They're spooked. Man, we blew it. 
The Big Billy is 475 yards away. Not an impossible shot, but what is impossible is knowing that I can retrieve that goat. You know, it looks like you just get up there and get a shot, but it's hard to say what kind of, what kind of topography you got. You might, you know, you can't shoot over there then realize you got stuff that there's just absolutely no way you'd ever cross. Not only is that Billy in a place where we wouldn't be able to retrieve it if it fell, it's separated from us by a series of cliff faces that are impassable. There's no way we could even get after that goat if we wanted to. They might as well be on the moon now, too. Oh, yeah. For our purposes, those goats no longer exist. Yeah, there's no way. I have to let it pass. No, he's just in the... You... I'm right. You, ne you would never get You'd him. never get him. You'd never get him. Look at him now. He's taunting you. Oh, he keeps taunting me. He's all skylined up there like he's on a, like on a beer ad or something. You'd be kidding me. Our only option now is to hunt our way in a loop back toward camp. Finally, we get all the way back toward the mountain near our camp. Danny takes a look at a patch of rock that we must have checked a dozen times, but this time our luck changes. You got an eye on some goats, Dan? Up in that stuff? Yeah. Bedded down? God, he's hard to find. White critter and white snow and white fog. They're just off, if you go to that left-hand peak, they're just down to the right of that. I got you. You see him? Oh, they're worth looking at. You can see it. So, oh no, 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 no! I got one that's got to be a billion, yeah, man. Yeah, no. The, yeah. I don't think we could get up in there. Oh yeah, we can. That's two billions. I think they're on the last bigger. I mean, we'll go, of course give another good look for you, anything. But. Dan, I'm telling you, there's not a doubt in my mind. The dolls are billies, okay. and there's not a doubt in my... That's good enough for me. There's not a lot of daylight left, but a short hunt means you have to take advantage of every opportunity you get. And this is probably our last chance. I say we go for it. So we're gonna drop our gear and go as light as we can so we can cover ground fast. There they are. We got a shot. What I want to do is get right up there, put the spot and scope just for a final check. And then if we if everything looks good, we'll take a shot. There they are. We got a shot. As I get ready to squeeze the trigger, something just doesn't seem right. Do you feel like that's a billy? I don't know. You better take a look. Let's see this go. I think it's an animal. The horns just look light to me. I mean, then just nothing about him says Billy to me. I can, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert at this one. They're, they're just light, man. They're just thin. I don't like it. It's all about right. Nanny. It's Nanny. Oh, unbelievable. I have to 
disappointing. What a lot of climbing. <laughs> Wish I could have figured that out a long time ago. I just wanted to make it after your triple sure, but. Mountain hunting can be a dangerous, adrenaline-fueled ride full of quick decisions and snap judgment calls made in the heat of the moment. And I love that aspect, but the thrill of the chase should never get in the way of making smart choices while in the woods. Alaska Fish and Game requests that hunters voluntarily pass up female goats, and they ask this in hopes that it'll help improve mountain goat populations for future generations. In the moment, when I had that nanny in my sights, I nearly went back on my intention to honor that particular request. But I didn't, and in large part, I have Danny to thank for that. A good hunting partner is more than just a companion. He's a moral compass as well. And my brother never wavered. He never gave me that, oh, just do it. And that's the best kind of support you can hope for. Whether I got to go on this trip or not, I still had an amazing experience hanging out with Danny while side hilling mountains and trudging through thigh deep snow. And he won't be getting rid of me anytime soon. I've already filled out next year's goat tag application. With some luck, we'll be back next year to do it all again. <laughs>